You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 27th of April. No Indian will be left behind, says Foreign Secretary as India evacuates citizens from Sudan. Pakistan fears another surgical strike, says former diplomat after Punch terror attack. And U.S. sanctions Sri Lankan governor over actions during Sri Lankan civil war. Well, more than 1,700 Indian nationals have been evacuated from conflict-hit Sudan and the government's focus is on getting every citizen out of harm's way as soon as possible, India's Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan Quatra said on Thursday. Quatra told reporters around 3,200 Indians were stuck in the African country, out of which 600 have reached India as part of the Operation Kaveri. India has positioned its Air Force planes and three naval ships for the massive rescue operations. Quatra termed the situation on ground as highly volatile. The conflict broke out between the country's army and paramilitary force nearly two weeks ago. Our effort is to get every standard Indian out of the harm's way into an area of relative safety, safety and then from there to Port Sudan and Bakya. And Chief Minister of India's Chhattisgarh State, Bhupesh Baghel, relatives and security personnel on Thursday paid tributes to the 10 policemen and the civilian driver who were killed in a blast as they were returning from an operation against ultra-left-wing guerrillas in the region. Rebel Maoist are suspected of having carried out the attack on the personnel of the District Reserve Guard. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also condemned the attack on Twitter. Rebel Maoists have been waging an armed struggle, claiming they are fighting to give poor farmers and landless labourers more control over their land and a greater claim on mineral wealth. The conflict has resulted in the death of several security personnel over the years. And former Pakistani diplomat Abdul Basit has said he fears that India may carry out another surgical strike in the aftermath of the Punch terror attack in which five Indian army personnel lost their lives. He, however, ruled out any such possibility ahead of the G20 summit. Basit said that fear of a retaliatory strike has become the talk of the town in Pakistan. He also tried to justify the terror attack by saying whoever has done it, be it Mujahideen or whosoever, they have targeted the military, not the civilians. Relations between the nuclear armed neighbors have been fraught for years. The Punch terror attack is also likely to cloud a visit of Pakistan's foreign minister, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, to India early next month for the SCO meet. Well, frequent price hikes of food and fuel have continued to upset people across Pakistan as the country grapples with a severe economic crisis. A report. People across cash-strapped Pakistan are frustrated over frequent price hikes of food and fuel, with no hope of respite amid the ongoing economic crisis. After the latest revision, petrol price has now risen to rupees 282 per litre that has further burdened the citizens. Inflation clocked in at 35% in March, fueled by a depreciating currency, a rollback in subsidies and the imposition of higher tariffs to secure an IMF bailout package of $1.1 billion. <laughs> Pakistan is also witnessing a government judiciary standoff with the Supreme Court ordering polls in Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa in May. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif's government has said it is not economically viable to hold snap elections ahead of a general election due in October. Well, the United States has sanctioned Sri Lanka's northwestern province governor and former Navy chief Vasanta Karanagoda over allegations of human rights violations and killings during the island's 26-year-long civil war. 
U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in a statement said the violations by the former naval commander were documented by NGOs and independent investigations. The U.S. is committed to acknowledging the suffering of victims and survivors of Sri Lanka's civil war, he said. Following the actions, Vasanta and his wife are ineligible for entry into the United States. Sri Lanka's foreign ministry in response said it rejects unilateral action without following due process. Vasanta is senior secondary defense official after current chief of defense staff General Shavendra Silva to get sanctioned by the U.S. for handling the final battle with the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam in 2009. And the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in Afghanistan has informed that the Afghan people will require 4.62 billion U.S. dollars in humanitarian relief in 2023. The UN body said with Afghanistan facing its third consecutive year of drought, second year of severe economic hardship and consequences of decades of war and recurrent natural disasters, humanitarian aid remains the last lifeline for much of the population. Meanwhile, Latif Nazari, Deputy Minister of Economy, has also urged the international community not to politicize humanitarian aid. This comes as UN officials have flagged concerns that donors may pull back on support to Afghanistan's aid program over the recent restrictions on female aid workers and the ongoing ban on education for women and girls. And amid new opportunities and incentives, filmmakers are getting attracted to shoot their films and music videos in the pristine beauty and picturesque locations of India's Jammu and Kashmir. Take a look. The scenic beauty and new opportunities and facilities which are being provided by the government are attracting filmmakers to shoot films and music videos in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Many film crew and production companies in the area have opened new doors for the people associated with the industry. The recent setting up of the multiplex is also seen as a major move to bring entertainment back to Kashmir. Place is not explored, it needs other explore new year. So shooting ke liye aise kafi kuch hai yahan pe, kyunki kafi unexplored hai aur log you know nahi aate the, but ab aane lage hain. So it's a good thing because it's saying that our jo hai local Kashmir Valley is one of the world's most militarized areas which has witnessed multiple terror attacks over the years. But the things are changing. The government has been encouraging local and international companies to set up businesses there since the region was brought under direct federal rule in 2019. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow.